Frazier has had the overall lead after three events, and he has never surrendered it. Lucas Hoberg is right next to him. He's in lane six, and Hoberg is only two points back in the overall standings of Matt Frazier. And Frazier struggling early with Rescue Randy and is falling behind. So we got one different drag on the field, and it looks like Cole Sager single-handed running forward. We haven't seen that yet. It's been a lot of monkey see, monkey do. But look at him out all the way out to the front. Great first move. Now Cole Sager is first to the rope. Lucas Hogberg in lane six is second. Now here comes Matt Frazier. He's wearing that white overall leader's jersey. He's in lane five. Sager's through his first rope climb. And now on to the thicker rope for his second rope climb before he takes off on the 650 meter run to the obstacle course. Sager's done. Wow. He'll have to complete that short loop and then out of the North Park and onto the obstacle course. He's the first man onto the run. Lucas Hogberg is second. And now Matt Fraser is done, as are a number of other athletes, Velmer among them. If Lucas Hogberg finds a way to finish ahead of Matt Fraser in this event, Lucas Hogberg could be your overall leader. Well, it looks like Cole's kind of, I don't want to say taking it easy, but he's going to use this as a recovery time. Lucas Hogberg doesn't normally do that. He likes to push the issue. And even though he's a bigger athlete, you wouldn't equate larger athlete and endurance type of events, but Lucas Hoberg is very, very strong in those events. You mentioned endurance type events. He was second in that marathon road. That's what put him in second place overall so to crazy. end day one. And now he is even with Cole Sager. Two of them with their hands on their vests that were provided by 511 Tactical. I think that strategy there, it's just more of a, ooh, we got a, oh, oh, we got a little jostling on the field, a little jostling on the field. First time we've seen that, Cole Sager, the former football player, using a little bit of a swim move to get by Hogberg. So the hands on the vest, so that's more just to kind of keep it from bouncing around. They don't have this too tight because they want to be able to breathe. That's just kind of limiting that bounce. But that little shoulder check, you see that barrier, just trying to keep that straight line as much as possible. Matt Fraser in the overall leader's white jersey. He's in the red shorts, right side of your screen. He's working back there as well. Time to beat belongs to James Newbury. Nine minutes, 11.87 seconds. See, these guys right now have to be thinking, compose yourself, get ready for those obstacles. We've seen guys that are first to the obstacle course, and then all of a sudden they're either last or in the back of the pack. So they need to make sure that they aren't too fatigued on this first part, on this run, so that they get to those obstacles and they can make each one count. They have to be very specific, very specific and exact when they hit those obstacles. Lucas Hoberg is in second place overall. Cole Sager is right behind him in third. Two of these men looking to put more pressure and possibly pass. Matt Fraser in the overall standings, and they are the second of eight obstacles. The rope wall, Lucas Hogberg up and over that. Cole Sager just barreling over that as well. Now Sager with a slight lead over Hogberg as they make their way to the low net. I am enjoying seeing Cole Sager pushing the limit early in this competition. We usually don't see that. We usually call him the comeback kid when he does some crazy things on the last two days. But knowing that he's up this far on the leaderboard, sitting in third place coming into the day, and pushing the limit, pushing the, 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 the expectations on this particular event, and pushing the rest of the field, this is awesome. Well, Brent Fikowski is right next to Cole Sager. That's on the left of your screen. He's climbing the cargo net as well. Matt Fraser is there, as is Patrick Velder. Sager's up and over. Hobart hits the ground, and Matt Fraser Ooh. takes a nasty spill off of that thing, but he is okay, and Velder's off it as well. But the two of them look to be all right. Frazier gets over the hop logs in a hurry. Velder looks like he's okay. Sometimes you gotta love that what adrenaline will uh, protect you from. <laughs> These guys are pushing the pace. They'd like to ride that line, and it's it's a risky strategy, but right now it's paying off for them. Sager and Hoberg still in front. Velder through the traverse with a road transfer part me, and now Matt Fraser is as well. 
Now onto the rope swing. Remember, James Newbery failed this obstacle last time, was able to hang on to his lead in the background behind Cole Sager was on the monkey bars. That's Patrick Fellner who got through the rope swing as well. You know, one thing we didn't see with Pat Vellner, he was last getting off the ro off the rescue ring because his hand, the hand of the dummy wasn't in this. So he's made up a lot of distance on the run and through the obstacle course. Matt Fraser onto the monkey bars. He will get through those no problem. And now it is the run back to the North Park. Cole Sager is in front of Lucas Hogberg. Sager is in lane four. Hogberg is in lane six. So Hogberg will have a shorter distance to run to his rope when he gets back inside the North Park. Cole Sager had a career best fifth place finish at the CrossFit Games in 2016. It was his third career appearance at that point. This is his fifth career appearance that he's making this year. Last year, not as good as that. He was 16th overall, but had three top 10 event finishes. So even though we see Matt Fraser back there in the white shirt, making his way up towards Cole up in the front and the rest of the group, I'm most impressed right now with Pat Vellner, who's sitting in that third place spot. You can see him right in the middle, right in front of Matt. He went from last place coming off the floor the first time, having that big fall, and then sitting and pushing the pace to get this close to the rest of the field. This kid is unreal. And, and keep this in mind, too. Even though Hoberg is ahead of Vellner on the run, Vellner has a shorter distance to go to get back to his rope. He's in lane eight. So that's closest to the entrance to the North Park when they return to the run. Hoberg's in lane six. So Vellner has a little bit of a lead right now on Lucas Hoberg. Cole Sager still your leader, and now Vellner and Hoberg are behind him, and Matt Fraser is behind the two of them, but Fraser now starting to catch up as Sager is on the back stretch behind our broadcast position, and then he'll make the left turn into the North Park, and now Matt Fraser has passed Patrick Vellner. Fraser is in lane number five. He's right in the middle of the field, but Vellner still has a shorter distance to go to get back to his rope. Now here comes Cole Sager, and he will return to lane number four and get to work on his final two rope climbs. Lucas Holberg's back, as is Frazier, and now Patrick Velder. Sager getting right to work. Sager is on the left. Hoberg's on the right. Hoberg had a little bit of trouble making the touch. There is no requirement as to when the athletes can come off of the ropes. So the second they make the touch, if they want to plummet off that thing, they are welcome to do so. Sager's done with his second rope climb, and he will get to work on rescue Randy, 132 feet. Patrick Veller is right with him, and now Matt Fraser is done. He is ahead of Lucas Hoberg, and that is big for Matt Fraser as he looks to hang on to the overall lead. Cole Sager, one-handed, dragging that thing down the field, and Cole Sager is staring an event win in the face. Cole Sager, all by himself with about 10 feet to go. Oorah! Cole Sager takes the battleground presented by the United States Marine Corps. Matt Fraser has passed Lucas Hogberg. Fraser's in the white. Hogberg's right next to him. Fraser in first. Hogberg wow. in after him. And now Pat Velder will take fourth in the heat. Oh, my goodness. Matt Fraser will hang on to his overall lead. But he will not have the breathing room that we are used to seeing him have on top of the overall leaderboard. There's now more men in this final heat coming to finish. Gorgon Carl Gumitson is at the bottom of your screen. He is in. Brent Fakowski at the top of your screen just tumbled over the finish line. Lucas Eschlinger has finished. Willie Georges at the top of your screen, the first man from France to represent his country at the CrossFit Games as an individual has just finished.
So all 10 men in the final heat finish, but no one does it faster than that man. Cole Sager, his second career event win, locks up 100 points as he looks to hang on to a spot in the top three in the overall standings. And Sager got off to a quick start and was able to maintain it throughout the entire event. Well, it was amazing to see Matt Frazier with that bobble, but if you look across the screen, everyone is doing the same thing except for Cole Sager. I love the individuality. I love the fact that he was doing his thing and this got him out to the front. He had that nice run and then we had that little bobble fight, a little jostling, a little, little football move there, a little swim and right past them. But you can see how difficult that oh, rope man. swing or that rope, that cargo net was. Matt went down. Belner oh, went down. Belner went down hard. Man, that was rough on those guys, but didn't really shake them. Cole Sager out in the front. We saw that big move by uh, Belner making his way up to the front. But then again, doing the same one arm pull across the field really made up, really put a lot of distance between him and the rest of the field. And what a way to finish for Cole Sager. Man, this guy is good this year. Cole Sager, his second career event win as he edges out Matt Fraser by 14 seconds, who had Lucas Holbrook breathing down his neck there at the end. Holbrook takes third. Patrick Fowler is fourth. And James Newberry, who had the prior time to beat, winds up in fifth place. Mike Arsenault is with your event winner. Thanks very much, Sean. Cole, that performance on event number five, that's going to keep you on the podium out of four heats. You were the only athlete to drag with one hand. Where did that strategy come from? Uh, you know, I, I just kind of looked at this, uh, the dummy as if it was a sled drag. It's 185 pounds. I just wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to be the fastest one to start dragging it. And that's kind of where that concept came up. It was honestly a last-minute decision. So you're leading after the first part, the dummy drag. As we hit to the run, what was the strategy in terms of pacing? Uh, keep the heart rate fairly low, make sure that I'm giving good strong breath so I can be really smooth through the obstacle course. It's when those things smooth as fast. And then come off that and it's just a matter of shutting it down from there. Let's look back to day one, four events, the hardest day one in CrossFit Games history. How did you recover from the four events, especially that marathon run Wednesday night? It was the only focus yesterday. <laughs> That's it. What did you do? Uh, a whole lot of body work, a whole lot of mobilizing, enjoying fans and people that i really get a lot of uh a relaxation from that i'm very social so yeah that's good all right thank you we'll see you later today yeah thank you everyone appreciate you guys cole sager takes the battleground presented by the united states marine corps but matt fraser will maintain his overall lead but we have a race here for the men the women up next in event five